amazing attendees. And uh, before we move on any further, I would like to ask everybody to give yourselves a round of applause for being such an amazing attendees for what I can only assume is a great community days. So thank you so, so much. Um, if you haven't heard already, we are very, very lucky that uh, Priyanka Sharma, who is the director of the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, is on the call with us right now. Uh, we have a couple of questions to ask her, um, and she has very graciously agreed to uh, come and talk to us all here. Um, so, can we connect? There we go. And uh, Priyanka, thank you so much for joining us. Can you hear me okay? Wonderful, thank you so much. So, um, we already came up with a couple of questions that uh, we, we thought of asking you. I hope that you might have a moment at the end maybe for some additional questions. Um, but before I get started with those, did, was there anything you'd like to say before I get started? Awesome. Thank you so, so much. So, um, uh, got a couple of questions here that uh, we came up with a little bit earlier this week. Um, so, I wanted to ask you a little bit uh, about the cloud native space. So, what are the biggest changes you're expecting in the cloud native space in the coming year? And where do you think you see the CNCF in a year or two from now? Sure. So let me take out my crystal ball. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think the best part of the cloud native ecosystem is that it's ever evolving, right? Um, in the past years, I mean, when we started in 2015, when I joined this ecosystem uh, as a contributor, Kubernetes had just been donated and we spent a, a while getting um, uh, getting through the container orchestration wars and now Kubernetes has emerged as the D de facto standard. And I think this year we'll continue to see Kubernetes enjoying a Linux-like moment. Um, I also think that uh, with the proliferation of Kubernetes, even the work we are doing within Kubernetes for uh, its infrastructure, the multi-cloud movement is going to gain more and more traction. I think uh, I speak with lots of folks in the space and they often are talking about just how they want to make cloud portability a reality. And I think great strides will be made in this field, in this field through various vendors and open, open source contributors. So that's one thing. Um, I think in general, I would also say like for end users who we spend a ton of time with because they are the, they are the people we are all serving. I, it's very clear that uh, they had, there was the initial euphoria of like the cloud will solve all your problems. And now they're very mature, much more nuanced in their perspective. And FinOps or, you know, cost management is a big focus for them. Uh, CNCF has a project called Open Cost that helps in that direction. And I think more and more efforts will come uh, from various places. Um, I, those are just two examples. I think cloud-based IDEs are coming like back in fashion. But before cloud native, I was doing a startup and I remember there was this whole online editor um, craze going on. And then we had this ebb uh, in, that, in that area. And now we're back to the flow, but in a much more mature way. Um, I think that uh, sustainability remains a key priority for the whole world, not just, just our context. And that will roll in green ops into fin ops. People more increasingly care about the environmental impact, about the energy impact, and all of that I expect to see um, uh, happening in our ecosystem. Uh, you, you may or may not know, we recently hosted the Cloud Native Security Con in Seattle, and it was such an amazing event. It was so many people, close to 800 plus, and Everybody there was like, oh, this feels like the original KubeCons. And I think that that moment in time happened because security is front and center. Open source as bombs will be everywhere. Cloud native security is going to play a critical role. And more and more people will come to this community to solve their problems because this is where we get things done. So that's what I expect from a technology perspective. 
how do I see CNCF changing as an organization in the next two years? Well, uh, I hope we are always changing to keep to meet the needs of this community, which is ever growing. So just in the last year, I'll tell you, um, as executive director, I have the same title. My job has completely changed, which is awesome because now we've brought in some senior leadership into the organization because we want to put more power behind our community programs, supporting maintainers and contributors. And uh, you will see more and more of those efforts coming out of the CNCF. You will also see a renewed and enhanced focus on uh, trainings and certifications because Kubernetes is having its Linux style moment, right? So that means more and more people need to be educated and upskilled. So we'll put a lot of energy there. Those are just uh, two examples, but you know, ask me in two years and I'll give you a retro. I definitely will do. Uh, and I'm really glad that you brought up sustainability. So uh, we, we had actually more than one talk just during this KCD talking about sustainability on Kubernetes. We had a couple of open source projects talking about you know how you can reduce your Kubernetes workloads when you don't need them. Uh, yeah. so, so it's really great to see that the sustainability side of uh, cloud native computing is really coming into the focus now. Um, cool, thank you so much for your answer. Um, next question, uh, I think I'm not gonna be the only person saying, uh, I'm gonna be at KubeCon this year. KubeCon is of course here in Amsterdam uh, yeah. after <laughs> being canceled in 2020. Um, what are you most looking forward to from the event? Oh my gosh, what are we not looking forward to? <laughs> It'll, as you said, right, we were supposed to be there three years ago, so it's just going to be lovely to finally make that happen and be in Amsterdam again. Um, something I always love about KubeCons is about 50% of attendees tend to be first timers, and that's projected to be the case this time as well. And I'm very, very happy about that because that means we bring more and more people into the cloud native ecosystem. Um, I think that this year we've made actually a lot of changes. So uh, I, I I don't know, have you attended, uh, is this gonna be your first KubeCon or how many KubeCon, how many KubeCons in are you? That's a great question. Can you put your hand up if uh, this is gonna be your first KubeCon this year? My goodness, I think it's about 60% of the room here. Wow, well, mm. awesome, we'll see you there. Um, for those in the for, who are the forty percent, right? Uh, how many of you attended co-located events or colos? Uh, I'm gonna reckon that's about ten percent of the room. Okay, awesome. So th those ten percent will know what I'm talking about here, which is that the colos were out of control. We had <laughs> so many, and that's awesome, right? That's because so much is happening in this ecosystem. Um, but we heard a lot of uh, feedback around how it was it was too much. It was a full week of just a lot. So we've streamlined the co-located events into a one day and made them shorter so that people have more bite-sized um, bite-sized information grabbing. We've also simplified like the ticketing alongside that. But I, I'm eager to hear what people say of this new experience around co-located events. We're also changing up how we do some of the social stuff around the welcome booth and the party. So all of that I'm hoping to hear feedback on because it's all brand new. So uh, that's something. And then I would say one of the things that's close to my heart, which is work in progress right now, so you're the first to hear it as a group, is we're looking at a startup subtract. So as cloud native matures, more and more companies have done great things here. And that includes as big as hyperscaler and as small as a two person startup. Uh, we want to explicitly cater to this startup crowd uh, with a subtrack where they get educated on how to plug into the cloud native ecosystem and uh, receive by giving. Um, and so we're looking at the exact programming, but check out your agenda for the startup hashtag in, in the business value track. So th those are some of my my favorites to come. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I think we very quickly had a question here regarding uh, your last answer. Can I? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I was. At, my name is Bart. I was attending uh, always the pre-conference uh, sessions two days, and, mm -hmm. and now I understand I have to fly twice a year to uh, to attend a conference, and I'd rather fly once than well. This time I'm going by bicycle, but that's another case. Uh, so. <laughs> So why why do we, are we forced to twi fly twice to a, to a uh, CNCF event if instead of having them all condensed in one location once a year or twice a year? 
just to make sure I understand the question, are you asking about why cube storms are happening in North America and Europe? Why are the why are the pre-conference events now spread on other dates? Uh, you mean things like Cloud Native Security Con? Yes. Okay, okay. So Cloud Native Security Con split off because it was getting too big for uh, for it to be held in KubeCon itself, and that we couldn't accommodate more than let's say two three hundred people max at the KubeCon. So even if you're there, it's it's hard to get in. Um, but in Seattle, we were able to hold more than double the people. And next year, we hope, expect to hold even more. But that doesn't mean that you have to travel to attend that and KubeCon will not have security co content. That's absolutely not the case. The security track actually gets more robust by splitting off this event. And there's also, um, gosh, how much am I revealing? But there's going to be uh, things like uh, security village, things like that. So. By no means will the content for security or any other topic that splits off into an event, right? Such as there's one GitOps con coming on. That doesn't mean KubeCon will not have that con content. It just means we can't hold all the people interested, so we're providing an extra avenue for it. Great question. Thank you so much. Um, all right, I will pop on to the next one. Uh, looking at the time, Priyanka, I'm not quite sure how much time you have for us uh, today, so I'm going to keep asking I'm questions. I'm here for you. you. Okay, good. This is early morning for me, so. <laughs> ah, wonderful. <laughs> the time you need. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about KCDs, because obviously we're here at a KCD. Um, and we're seeing more and more KCDs popping up all around the world. You know, uh, we spoke a little bit uh, earlier today or yesterday about the fact that we're, we're trying to help up uh, KCD Ukraine pop up, for example. Um, in your opinion, what is the impact of these community events? And do you have any great stories from attending a KCD or something like a KubeCon that you'd like to share with us today? Sure. I think KCDs are instrumental in making cloud native ubiquitous because they take us global in a way we really can't in a, a, through any other mechanism. KubeCons, for example, uh, the previous uh, person who asked the question pointed out, oh, how do I get there? There is, or like, you know, security con, how do I get there? It's like too many times of flying. KCDs come to the person where they are, and that's what makes them so wonderful. Uh, you know, recently we were speaking with uh, folks who organized KCD Pakistan, and it went so well, and their primary focus was growing their speaker, uh, sorry, student community. And they showcased a lot of first time speakers and those folks journey in CNCF, encouraging the next generation, right? And uh, that would be not possible, or let's say much harder to accomplish without this programming in place. We also had KCD Africa last year, where we uh, brought forth awareness around open source technologies and how to contribute, get people more involved. Um, so they, it, they're able to reach regions and people that would be harder otherwise. You yourself mentioned the KCD Ukraine. It's like, yeah, we gotta, we got to address that eco uh, community as fast as we can. So overall, I think we're creating endless opportunities for people by having this program. We're also working, as I told you, we're always evolving. We're also working to supercharge KCDs in 2023 for, for 2024 so that we can uh, support you all organizers with more and more things that you can provide as value add to your attendees. So we want the KCD ecosystem to keep growing. And actually, I would like to make a call that if you all have ideas on how to uh, up level the KCDs to bring even more value to people where they live, uh, I'm all ears because we're in the program design phase right now. Um, so those are some examples of KCDs particularly, even KubeCons, right? We have the um, DanCon scholarship through which uh, needs-based or diversity folks, they can apply and attend. Um, I, it's so sweet. Every, every KubeCon I go and there's suddenly like, like a gaggle of students who are so sweet and so happy and they rush up to me and they tell me, hey, are you Priyanka? And I say, yes. And they're like, we're the DanCon scholars. And they tell me their stories. It invariably happens on its own. And it's the most gratifying time for me at the conference. And they tell me just how important it is that they're there and how they plan to stick around and make a difference here and how for them their life is changing because 
school, colleges, etc., they provide you curriculum. They don't provide you the level of um, understanding of or access that things like this can. So I'm really glad we can help. That's awesome. What, what a lovely story as well. I'm going to pause here before I ask my last question to see if there's anybody in the audience who has a question for Priyanka. Yep, we've got a couple here because I feel bad standing on stage and just asking questions that I've pre-recorded too much. I, I, yeah. So I'm a big proponent of the CNCF, so don't get my question wrong here, but I've got a critical remark. So the portfolio of projects has blown. It's I out know. of the sky. Do we also, uh, um, I, I, f I find myself trying out some projects and I find projects that haven't changed in four or five years. Mm. I'm here for a long time, so know that. Um, and, and then I look at the Git repository and it hasn't even had a change for two years. Are we also shaking the tree and slimming it down? Um, or can we be more, more proactive in that way, probably, to keep it yes. alive and to keep it vibrant. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your comment and question. Uh, I do agree with you myself. It's it's so big as an ecosystem, right? It, 150 plus projects is not easy to parse through. Um, ultimately, this, this all rests in the hand of the Technical Oversight Committee. They lead us with their technology vision. Um, I am a proponent of us archiving more projects that uh, that have kind of stalled for a long enough time with, with, with you know with the right parameters in place uh, so I'm in agreement with you I think uh, the, the chat I'm I don't want to speak for the TOC here so please understand that but from what I observe the challenge that they face is that they have so much inbound to process so many star uh, projects applied to get in uh, by either at sandbox level or in, uh, incubation um, that perhaps the archival process could use a bit more, could use a bit more time and attention than it is able to get just because their top priority can, is serving the community and there's so much inbound that they have to handle. Yeah, but I are you, yeah. I, th I think we should be more critical. Is it still being used or uh, are there changes yeah. being added and perhaps not immediately deprecate projects, but just put right. them in, in a holding position or whatever, right? You can always bring them alive. I mean, things can change, but we, we should guard, I think, the portfolio and be critical that it stays special uh, the way it was a few years ago and that it's not being a dumping ground for all kinds of half dead projects. Um, I have a qu can I ask you a question? Yes, sure. Uh, do you find that in the incubation level and graduation level projects as well, or are you seeing it mostly in sandbox? No, incubation. Uh, I, I looked at WERF two weeks ago, and it was the same as what it was four years ago. And uh, today I heard that the sponsoring, and I, I tried out Tinkerbell, for instance. It never worked. Um, and today I heard that even the project, that the, 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 the business that sponsored it, that it has gone uh, 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 broke or whatever, they're oh, not wow. alive anymore. So I think there's, those are valuable projects, but if it's not being grown and yeah. being... Just two examples on the top of my head, but there are a lot yeah. more. No, uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing, because I think Sandbox is a place for all kinds of things happening, but incubation and up, I agree with you that we need a more rigorous uh, sort of eye on where some, uh, what is the activity level at? I will take your feedback to the TOC and try to push them <laughs> on this and get their perspective as well. But I also encourage you, I, you probably already know about the open TOC calls, and uh, but I think I would encourage you to attend there and sh share in your own words as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your question. Do we have any other questions for Priyanka? Okay, I have one last question for you, which uh, I came up with. Um, I hope it's not too boring. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask, you know, obviously uh, now the in-person events are becoming commonplace again. Uh, do you have any highlights from virtual events from the last couple of years? You know, obviously uh, this is a little bit biased as an organizer of an event, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we, we tried to do our best during the two years to, to do something virtual. Um, do you think that hybrid events are going to be here to stay for the future? I think this also ties into the question from before a little bit, where you know flying is you know maybe not the most sustainable way to go and attend a conference. Um, do you think that this is going to be the future of events, or do you think we're going to go back to just purely in-person events again? I think being able to go virtual in the pandemic was essential for our ecosystem. Uh, as, as you said, you, you organize events as well, and like the two years were tough, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, how do we support our ecosystems when we cannot see people? We didn't know how. And we, by being able to go virtual, whether it's through simple mechanisms like Zoom, Google Meet, or it is through more robust platforms that came about, it was a lifesaver. I, I think all of the cloud native community was able to stay together and support it itself. Uh, and each other because we had that option and we come we did all the creative things right connect the coupon uh, platform have slack with it alongside do the happy hours on zoom we all made the best of it um and the the benefit we received out of it is that our reach was bigger more people could attend like you said what we have also found though that the hankering for in person is real people definitely gain a lot from uh literally just seeing each other face to face even if they don't you know sit down and work on a project um i've heard like i've heard product uh, collaboration increases like almost double just by virtue of both being in the same space as somebody else so we cannot discount the value of being able to meet each other in person that said i think um uh, the, the longest lasting impact that the hybrid the virtual event uh, time period will have for us is that the events will be more accessible online even if they're back in person so I do believe in hybrid events I will say my personal opinion going through the pandemic is that the tooling was not ready for it right mm. the tooling that we had was not Definitely. ready for it and it was so clunky. I mean there were challenges let's just say there were challenges so in my opinion the hybridization of events will not rely or will not continue to rely on tech plugy technologies it might simplify so that uh, you somebody who is um, not attending in person is still able to get the content still able to engage on you know places like slack discord but uh, and then the uh, sort of more programmed aspect happens in person that's that's my perspective but that's I'm one individual, when we run events in CNCF, it's, we're a whole team, I have a really strong events team I'm proud of. So, uh, what you hear just now is the Priyanka opinion. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so, so much for asking or answering our questions. Um, any last questions for Priyanka before we let her go? Oh, we've got two right here in the front of the center. Priyanka, how much time of yours can we take up? I'm, I'm noticing Let's the time. Let's do these two questions and then call it. How wonderful. about Wonderful, yep. It's a one question, actually. Yep, you on. Okay. I think uh, you mentioned that you really liked the idea that uh, the students are attending different uh, CNCF events like KubeCon or the Community Days. Um, I was wondering, like, do you have you thought, like, uh, maybe like in the CNCF itself, like, about uh, getting into collaboration with the universities or like uh, maybe not fully fledged collaborations because uh, uh, people in the industry have stuff to do. But uh, something like giving, giving like individual uh, lectures or like spreading the gospel of uh, uh, cloud nativeness in a sense, because like uh, at least from my experience as a student, like many universities still have like very, um, let's just say, obscure attachment to old technologies. So uh, giving, uh, obviously, when the students go into the industry, they'll have an opportunity to like quickly learn the new stuff, yeah. but. Uh, at least in my opinion, it would be very beneficial to show them the way even before that happens. So for instance, uh, let me give like the simplest example, like instead of running a uh, simple container with a database, they just install some very obscure uh, enterprise distribution when they're dealing with their databases courses. So uh, w what's your opinion on that? Like being able to spread the gospel uh, among the uh, students and the future potentially collaborators to the open source projects. 
Yes, I wholeheartedly believe in that. I, as I said, they are the next generation or, or you know, next cohort um, of folks who are going to make cloud native ubiquitous. So we got to reach them. I think our event scholarships and the mentoring program that we run with, uh, through Google Summer Code as well as our own uh, LFX mentoring are good starts. But I have definitely toyed with the idea that you're talking about of can we have a like you know can a campus ambassadors program, and I think we've really only been limited by bandwidth of the CNCF is a small staff, um, but I would love to see such a program start emerging in the community and CNCF could hop in and support because I agree with you that uh, the curriculum in universities and colleges may be a little bit behind sometimes and definitely not connected to real world examples and, and, um, and projects that happen. The, the interesting thing is I think it's the connecting the dots is what's required because you have the mentorship programs, you have the uh, event attendance possibilities, you have the job boards. It's more getting the information there to to the students i mean i'll tell you this so my brother i have a much younger brother he's doing his master's uh, right now in computer science and uh, he knows all about cube cons because my whole family knows everything about cube cons um and then <laughs> and, and, yeah it's like everyone they're like oh cube cons coming don't disturb her <laughs> and so i uh, he knows about it and i've encouraged him to go many times and he's not showed up yet and then i uh, I was talking to him the other day about how to advance his career, and I was like, open source contribution is number one. You really need to get involved. And I started sharing how at KubeCon, that's what happens here. Like, you know, visibility is given to contributors, maintainers, people tell those stories. He's like, really? You folks talk about open? I was like, you've known KubeCon for this long, and you didn't realize that's what's going on? And so if that can happen to my brother, who <laughs> talks about this all the time, I feel like we really need to disseminate this information. Um, I think, as I was saying before, we really we need a program programmatic approach. If you or folks in the community are interested in creating a minimum viable program, we would love to support it with uh, resources and uh, human power. Awesome! Thank you so so much. We have one more question. No, oh, it was the same question. All well. Right. In that case, um, Priyanka, any last 